Hi, this is Tom Sinclair, that Vid Blaster guy. This show originally aired on May 8th. And, uh, you know, I probably shouldn't have done it, but I was testing out some different ways of doing things. And so uh, the, the recorded quality of this video is not up to standard, but the content is probably worth it. So uh, hang in there. There'll be some pops in the audio and a little bit of jerkiness in the video, uh, but that's operator error. Uh, so uh, enjoy the show. Welcome, I'm Tom Sinclair, that vid blaster guy, and behind me is a green screen, which was supposed to be, um, not supposed to be a green screen. Uh, today is May 8th, 2013. Really excited about today's show. I've, I've recreated this, this profile from scratch today, and obviously I left out uh, connecting the, uh, the players correctly. So that's what I should be looking like right there. Um, whoops, there we go. Um, having all sorts of fun today on the That Vid Blaster Guide show. We are, we are really pushing the envelope today with the profile that we're running, everything that we're trying to do. Remember the basic premise of this show. I'm a Vid Blaster reseller, and I want to educate people on Vid Blaster so that you'll see why I love it so much, and hopefully you will too. But I believe that one man with one PC can do one awesome broadcast. And I'm seeing lots of people do it, and I'm striving for it, getting better every week. And so today's a day when we're going to sort of push the envelope a little bit as it, as it is. I think uh, my, my i7 2700K is, is pretty well maxed. Um, yeah, we're about 97% right now, but we're recording. We're streaming two different streams, and we're uh, communicating on Skype. I've got uh, Mike Wollers with uh, Ocom Sales, who has shipped me this really cool Canon um, H41 IPHD hot rod camera. And we're gonna have him right now, so we'll have him up in just a minute. Um, but also, I've been working, in fact, one of the reasons why the show's a little late on the getting, getting on the air today, is I've been working on my Korg uh, Nano Control um, MIDI control surface um, using a, a piece of software called Mono MIDI, and we'll tell you all about that at the end of the show, uh, as a way to control a lot of the show today. So a lot of the show today will be controlled with that control surface, and uh, again, it's just it took you know, maybe 10 minutes to program it before we started here, and you know, there are going to be some bugs, some flaws, uh, but, but that's the way it goes a lot of times. Um, the, the, probably the latest news for those of you that haven't been paying attention in the last couple of weeks is Vid Blaster is now in version 3 in beta. Today we are using the latest, greatest beta, and you're never, ever supposed to use the latest, greatest beta for live production, especially not live. Goodness gracious. If you do it taped, I mean, if you, if you mess it up, you can erase it and start again. But live, there just is no, uh, you know, there's nowhere to hide if you're going live. So we're going live today, and we're pushing it pretty hard with our profile. 3.08 is the latest beta. 3.06 was released two weeks ago as the first of the version 3s, excuse me, the version 3 betas that were available to the general public. And as you recall, we had David Stepper on as our guest, and David talked about um, excuse me, that was, I guess that was just last week, wasn't it, David? Sorry about that. David uh, was part of the private beta testing group and talked about what it was like to be part of that. If you missed that show, it's, it's available in the archives. You can catch it uh, uh, if you subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, that Vid Blaster Guy. Or you can just go to our website, thatvidblasterguy.com, and, and check it out in the archives. Uh, we'll try to, um, to keep a, 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 a telling We'll tell the story of version 3 as it goes through its different uh, metamorphoses. Uh, right now, in version 3.08, we're still waiting for a couple of features to be added back to version 3 that were available and, and well used in version 2. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is the playlist. Uh, the playlist is a great feature of Vid Blaster and allows you to basically uh, set up either a folder or a list of files that you would like to play. They could be video, they could be audio, and you tell the player, hey, go out and get playlist number one and play it. 
And so it will go out and get playlist number one, which could be synced to a particular folder or could have a folder imported or could just be a select, selected list of files to be played. And then Blaster will play that, that profile until it reaches the end. And unfortunately, that's not yet has not yet been put back into version 3. So we'll be waiting uh, with, with bated breath for that one. Um, one of the new features that just came out in 3.08, and I'm pretty excited about this one because I've been asking for it for mm, maybe two years, and that is the ability to lock modules. You'll say, well, why would I want to lock modules? Well, I think locking modules is going to be important if you're in a situation where you're, you're teaching um, or where you're trying to instruct somebody on how to use FidBlaster, and you don't want them to accidentally damage your profile. Uh, a lot of times when I'm doing um, uh, high school sports, I will have teenagers come in and help me, and they may take over VidBlaster for a few minutes. And some more adventurous ones <laughs> might try to move modules around or make modules do different things, and I don't want them to do that. So I have the ability to lock the profile. And, that, and you can get to that feature. Let's see, I think it's file, um, and it's you know, top that left-hand corner, um, where you have your profiles, where you can clear, load, or save a profile. The new command is lock profile. And so I think that's pretty cool. I can't wait to try it out. And, you know, it's the kind of feature that keeps you from making a mistake, I think, is, is what it is. Somebody was talking the other day about using the lock profile when they were testing different profiles. And they would lock a profile, and then they would add some modules to it in order to see how it worked. And I'm waiting. I'm interested to try that one, too. I can't wait to try that one. That's going to be fun. I've got my list here of, of what I'm supposed to be doing, so I want to make sure I'm staying on track. Um, if you haven't tried VidBlaster, if you're just discovering us today and you want to try VidBlaster, there is a free trial that is not crippled in any way. It's fully functional. The only thing is it has a little watermark up in the top, top right-hand corner. It's called the VidBlaster Vid Trial Edition. And you can download that Excuse me, by going to the VidBlaster uh, support forum. And that address is, you know, I ought to have it in a little URL screen right here, but sorry about that, I don't. It's forum.vidblaster.com. And once you get to the forum, scroll down to the very last major section of the forum. It's called Downloads. And if you go into the Downloads section, um, probably the last 20 versions of VidBlaster are there to available to download. And if you download it, and if you don't have a license, it'll pop up on your screen as a trial edition. Uh, the latest release version of VidBlaster is version 2.27. That's the official release. So if you were to purchase VidBlaster, that's what you would get is 2.27. But if you want to live dangerously and see what's going on on the very cutting edge of VidBlaster, you can download version 3.08, like what we're using today, and play with it and see all the new upgrades that have been made to the player and the recorder and the camera so far as 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 beefing up vid blaster and making it stronger and able to deal with all of the the tough challenges we throw at it when we start going to high definition resolutions today's resolution is 864 by 480 if you're curious we're doing that at 30 frames a second and we're streaming a couple of streams to decast that's our uh, vpn uh, excuse me, C, uh, <laughs> our CDN of choice, Content Delivery Network, thecast.com. They're good folks. They don't give us anything. We just like them. Uh, I think it costs me about $25, $28 a month uh, to buy the bandwidth. That's why there are no ads on this show. And, and, and they're good folks. We're also using Adobe Flash Media Live Encoder 3.2 to do the encoding. And what else are we doing cool today? Oh yeah, we've got we've got uh, we've got somebody sitting in in the uh, Skype bull, bullpen. Well, in fact, let's go ahead and move over to that, and I'm going to use my uh, my nano control here. And if I've got it programmed correctly, if I press this key right here, ha! There he is, Mike Waller's here. Mike, welcome to the show. Glad to have you. Thank you. Mike is with Ocom Sales. And about, um, golly, Mike, maybe six weeks ago, he called me up out of the blue and he said, hey, how'd you like it if I sent you a couple of cameras to take a look at? And I'm thinking either this is a, 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 a very interesting scammer calling me or maybe I better pay attention because maybe he's got something I need to know about. 
And sure enough, Mike sent me cameras. That is really cool. Mike, tell us how in the world did you find out about VidBlaster? How did you find me? And, and how are you connected to cameras? I mean, what's, what's going on with you? Gosh, well, um, I'm a uh, sales rep for the security, the surveillance security industry. <clears throat> and uh, one of the products in my portfolio is a manufacturer called Ericont. They make IP, IP cameras. Um, and when I started repping them, I knew this was probably the future of broadcast, but I didn't have a lot of experience in broadcast. Did some research, stumbled across VidBlaster a year ago. Uh, I don't think it was quite ready for Aircon, even though um, Mike uh, Mike has experimented with them, and I think he's gotten them to work. I, I had limited um, positive results, and then I got in an argument at a trade show with a Canon rep, and uh, that turned into them sending me cameras, and that turned us into uh, repping their product, and I am so impressed with it, and I've gotten such great results with VidBlaster. Uh, that I had to send one to you. <laughs> you got to try this. So uh, that's the story. And um, Tom can tell you a little bit about uh, about the product. Well, you know, it's 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 been a ton of fun. Um, you know, there's nothing like having Christmas in May. Um, and when this huge box arrived, and uh, and I got to crack into it, I got this really cool camera. And it's it's an IP camera. And and Mike, you know, you correct me if I'm wrong because I'm I'm a newbie. It's, it's, an, it's a high definition that will connect via uh, Ethernet and is actually powered by uh, one or two of the wires in the Ethernet cable, in the, in the Cat5 cable called Power Over Ethernet, Ethernet. P-O-E. Yes. And, and, you know, he didn't know it, but before we, we actually met yesterday and, and we're setting up this thing and... And uh, I'd already set it all up. I didn't, you know, I could, couldn't help it. And so he's saying, well, you need to plug it. Oh, I've already done that. Well, you need to, oh, I've already done that. We need to do, no, I've already done that. I just want to make it work. Come on, I can't figure out how to make it work. And so in about three minutes, uh, Mike said, oh, we'll type in this URL into your, into your uh, Internet Explorer browser. And pow, there it was. So you want to see the picture? All right, let, let's, let's see if we can see, see the picture here. Um, this is... No, that's sorry. That's the wrong picture. Take a look at this picture. That oh, and that's my mic. You know, I don't even have a picture of the camera. Isn't that terrible? But let me go back to this shot right here. This is actually, and let me adjust the, the shot a little bit. Sorry, guys. This is a a work in progress. What? Oh, I've there got, we go. Yeah, this is the Internet Explorer window, and let me get it up. Tad, so we so everybody at home can see a little better. And right here is the go button. And once you press this go button, you can now come up here. Oops, I turned it off. Let me turn it back on. Come up here to the the zoom button, and I can drag it down. And when I let it loose, it will pull back, pull back a little bit more. One of my favorite features of this is if I want to see me, I just bring my cursor over to me, and it centers it on me. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? I have a camera that centers yeah. on you whenever you want to. <laughs> and let's see. The, uh, the the bar down here at the bottom allows me to um, to pan. So I'm going to drag it back about a quarter of the way. And it's going to pan over to my light set over here on my right. I'm going to drag it back even further. And the camera is going to go almost all the way back around pointing away from me now. There's my bookshelf. So let's go back to the quarter mark. That's the light. Back to about halfway. That's going to be me. Back to the other quarter. That's going to be oops, just past my other light set. We'll pull back and let you see the light set. There it is. And then all the way over to the to the right will be back to the bookshelf. So you've got three what, three hundred and seventy degrees, Mike? Uh not quite. I don't um it'll it'll almost do a three sixty. It uh, it won't, and you, it, you can't keep on doing revolutions. Right. Yeah. It doesn't go you really have to right. go back. You have to go back and forth. But it also goes up, 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 up. This is a ceiling fan in my ceiling that is almost right above my head. I mean, that is incredible. And of course, we can make it dance. And then we'll. 
we'll come back down to a reasonable height and come back into the center. Now, the camera is currently set at a resolution of 960 by 4, excuse me, by 540. And that is, uh, let's, let's come back and, and get Mike in the, in the show. All right. Um, and that is the, uh, the one of four resolutions that are available on this one, uh, 320 by 240. And then, oh, is that right? Am I reading that right? Yeah. Hold on a second. Whoop, whoop. Oops, wrong screen. Bear with me, folks. This is, uh, this is all new to me. You'd think I'd never run VidBlaster before, but this, there we go. We've got a drop-down box right here. Let's see. Let's pull it up. And we've got uh, 320 by 240 and 480 by 270. And then that doubles to 960 by 540. And that doubles to 1920 by 1080. And so we're not going to take it up to 1920 by 10. Well, shall we live da dangerously? Let's see what happens. When we do sure, that. let's do it. Let's do it. Everything may just crash right here. So we are now at 1080. How close? In fact, let's switch over. This is the camera feed right there. Wow. And. <laughs> wow. I'd say that's closer than you want to be. Now, for those of you watching at home, you can't see what I see because I see, <laughs> I see 1080. Um, you can only see the 864 by 480. So imagine what it would look like if you were looking at it uh, the way I'm looking at it. Wow. Oh my goodness. All right, let's let's get Mike back up here. Um, that's that's pretty. In fact, let, I think the camera's eating up a few CPU cycles here, so we're going to switch back to the other one. Just one second, folks. This is live. This is not uh, super rehearsed, and with all the bugs worked out in advance, this is this is live. So we'll turn it off, turn it back on. Hopefully, that'll take the reset setting. See some. Uh, I see some comments here in the chat room about sync um my i've done a couple of live events um i've done a wedding uh i should show you the footage it is absolutely stunning um no issues uh i had to at the full resolution at 1080p um i've got mixed results mainly from the camera side not delivering uh a full 30 uh, 30 frames but when we turn it down to this resolution, at the 960, it's uh Yeah, I think when I was doing some testing yesterday, Mike and I were talking about it at, at 960. Um, I figured it was about a, a quarter second um, delay, which, um, you know, I probably could have worked on. I mean, again, we had tweaking with this. Basically, we plugged it in, whatever settings it had, away we went. Um, this is right out of the box. Um, I can't imagine what it would be if, if I could spend half a day playing with it and getting into the settings and saying, okay, let's get VidBlaster in this camera to just... Um, that would have been really cool. But, you know, it is what it is. But this is, uh, this is like, very cool, guys. I can imagine using this camera in a church setting, maybe even having a couple of them, and, and having one a whole broadcast, uh, including controlling the cameras from one remote location. They wouldn't even have to be in the same room. Holy cow. Um, I can imagine uh, uh, Tommy House is in, the, is in the house tonight, and uh, Tommy says that they use something similar to this for his uh, AA. Imagine putting a couple of these out at a baseball game and uh, one out in center field that could zoom in right over the pitcher's shoulder so you could see whether the ball was a strike or a ball. Um, I, I can't imagine what it would be like to, to do something like that. That would be so very cool. Is there a way to make these cams go wireless? Yeah, uh, your big manufacturers, Ericont, uh, Access Canon, in the security network space, 
don't usually incorporate wireless as part of the so that's more of a networking thing. So because it's an IP camera, you're unlimited. However you want to move that data is up to you. Whatever manufacturer you want to use, whatever route, I mean, fiber, coax, uh, Ethernet, wireless, laser. Uh, so, yeah. That's what this guy looks like. Oh, yeah. There we go. So that right there is the little brother. That's the 40, which has been out about two years. No, that's the 41. Is that the 41? That's okay. the 41, yeah. And they look about the same. So you can... You can have that camera as it is or upside down. It'll flip the camera. And if you wanted to put it outside, there's housings on it. I mean, you could put it in the rain. You could do a lot of neat things with it. So uh, what we're doing here, what, what's neat about this is that this is a comparable broadcast solution at really an affordable price. Uh, this camera is, I mean, 2000 might seem a lot, and makes cameras that are 25,000, and that's without the lens. And that would be a cinema camera. So when we look at that, and we can get some of that power down to, to our side and also have IP, it's, it's amazing. This camera really isn't, you know, was never made to, to be uh, working with a blaster. Okay, let's see if we can get a little, little two screen shot here. Okay, so I'll just, I'm just going to answer some of these uh, questions. Okay. The, uh, the camera has a lot of features. You can control the speed of the pan tilt zoom. Um, and that's beyond the scope of what we're doing here, or what I've been able to do in Vid Blaster. It has an API, and, and I suspect if I got down to it with working with Vid Blaster, we could go to the Vid Blaster API, hit the camera, and you could actually have controls right inside Vid Blaster if you want a smoother pan. It also has presets. So if you're one guy and you've got three of these and you want to go to a particular shot, which is typically what I've done in the past, you can do that. But one of the real the real magic of having an IP camera versus even like a, like a Canon 5D. Canon 5D, and then I have to encode or digitize that output uh, either in, in Vid Blaster or through an encoder, other means. IP completely frees us up. So this is a camera I, I can hang uh, off a truss and then I can wirelessly send it. I, I can have this out on a lake and send it wirelessly. And once once our information's on the network, my controller could be anywhere. In fact, I could be controlling that camera in Tom's studio right now. So it just it opens up things that we've never been able to really do in, in a, a very traditional broadcast setting, at least at our level. Cool. All right, keep talking, Mike. Yeah, I'm just going through uh, some of these comments here. Yeah, um, so Canon is a company, as I've learned about them with this product, one of the Canon has so much experience in the in just the, the imaging business. Um, so this particular camera uses the same processor to do color and lighting adjustments as the Cinema EOS. 100, 300, and 500. So, uh, any big guys know about that camera? It, you know, it's about a, it's about a twenty-five thousand dollar camera. So, this little two thousand dollar camera has the same processor. Only output on this camera is an Ethernet. So, the camera has to process that, turn it into packets, send it down out the wire, and then we take that in with Vid Blaster. That's where our latency comes from, uh, at least at, at this point. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a great fit. I've really enjoyed working with it. Um, plan on, on using it. And uh, my, uh, I just want to tell you, my, my intention here is to show this is my, this is my new passion and, and hobby. So it wasn't necessarily sell the product, but to introduce something that I think can revolutionize what you guys are doing. Um, and uh, it certainly has for me. So uh, any more questions? Doesn't look like it. It's a 20x optical. And see, Canon is, some of you probably know from broadcast, Canon makes some of the best lenses in the world. And they make the kind of glass for the Hubble, uh, Hubble telescope. Um, and, and part of the magic, one of the reasons why this camera is so good is the lens is integrated with it, and it's a Canon lens. So it gives us an outstanding picture. This is, you ought to see it at night. I said night. I mean, uh, low lumen, low lux uh, shot. It's it's just mind blowing that we can do this from an IP camera. I'd expect these results from a Canon 5D or DLSR or you know, something nice like that. 
it's jumping. Yeah, part of that might be the speed. Uh, talk about my setups in remote environments. So what I'm doing right now um, is I I hang the cameras. I'm doing a lecture, a wedding, a church. I try to get the cameras as high as I can because we can, with the 20x optical, we we can get shots that you usually can't get in that environment. So I try to get them high. And then I use wireless mics. I bring that back to board you know, blaster style. Uh, run that into vid blaster, and I have a 16 port PoE switch. I wouldn't need 16 ports. I went overboard. That powers all the cameras. So just to keep things simple in my live setups, because my events, I'm not interested in in doing a studio type of stuff. So uh, I power the cameras all PoE with uh, just Cat5. So I, I'll run it 100, 150 feet, put it up in the trussing, bring it back to my booth, and mix everything in VidBlaster. Then I usually have a separate laptop to control the positioning. I'll move the camera. Whatever camera I'm moving, I'm not showing or broadcasting or recording. So I get my shot, then I put back to it. And I've done, I've done as many of these, I've, uh, as four of these, and my i7 with VidBlaster runs about a 30%. That's while recording it, running audio. That's on version. Uh, so it's, it's just amazing. Everything is virtual. This, this camera is, uh, the question is, uh, you know, is, is there a physical control surface? This camera is really intended for a security application and to be hung out somewhere. So there's, there's, there's nothing everything through IP. So and that's why a web browser, we can use traditional security controls. That there's a zillion great joysticks. We can use other soft, software applications. Um, kind of what Tom's doing with MIDI control surfaces, I have a lot of experience with that, and I, re I really like that approach. So what it does for uh, really pick and choose your control surface. How do you keep the sound in sync? The camera... The camera actually has mic inputs. Um, that's something I haven't used. I, I'm, um, I, I don't expect that. Uh, I haven't had any issues with sync at all, but I've only done a couple events, like three, where I'm actually doing audio. Let me, um, in fact, if you guys want to see a security joystick, I think. No, it's uh, it's it's alone. I show you one. They're, they're they're nice. Mike, where are you? Um, I'm actually in the office in my home, and that uh, I've got a I've got a 19 inch rack. If that's kind of what you see back there. Uh, and I need green screen. <laughs> it doesn't, um, but doesn't everybody want a 19 inch rack at home? <laughs> I'm a nerd. I'm, I'm a geek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. I love it. I love it. Folks, if you're watching us uh, in what Mike is doing is ref is referring to some questions in the chat room. Uh, we've got a pretty active chat room today, and, and they are, are peppering him with questions right and left. Um, and any more questions, guys? Or would you like to see the camera do some other kinds of things? I was able to make it dance, but uh, you can't see much in the video by doing that. Let's see, Carl is asking from a, a multi-camera video uh, standpoint, um, I'm not using DS, uh, DSLRs or SLRs or DS or D7, um, but he wants to compare using a, a DSLR for video. So, yeah, let me comment. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with traditional broadcast cameras, um, which is why in my conversation I relate it to the 5D, Canon's 5D, because that level without spending, you know, thirty to $100,000 on a camera, uh, that's probably as close as you're going to get, uh, in, it would seem, uh, of quality. You know, if you go to any wedding, the videographer is using a 5D, uh, and if not, they're they're ashamed of it um, because that's that's. So I relate it to that, at least in what I've seen. Um, 
but yeah, typically it's not used for for uh, live or broadcast environments, the 5D, because we have the problem of we, we've got all this data and we have to encode it. And it, then we have to somehow get that to like a vid blaster. But, uh, and that's camera unique and so great. Excellent question. Okay. Uh, the question is, does the cam have a CMOS sensor? Uh, this one does. They can and make some in their lines that do use a CCD sensor. A CMOS sensor is a pure digital sensor. Um, so yeah, I, I believe your typical kind of sensor, like the Panasonic you see a lot, that's going to use a CCD sensor. Uh, and you know, five years ago, there was a lot of debate on, on if a CMOS sensor would ever deliver the picture quality of CCD. I think in the future, that's, that's all we'll see actually, especially as we enter the 4k or ultra high def, uh, oh my goodness, 4k. Uh, let's see. Martin had asked to see a shot to see what the uh, the lip sync problems was here. Let me, uh, or excuse me, what the latency was, and let's zoom in a little bit. Not that you want to see me, but that you want to see what the delay would be in me speaking, so you can see lip sync is off just a tad. Um, but again, keep in mind that we are uh, we're doing a lot of things on the single PC at a time. And video always tends to lag behind audio. Um, if we were putting this on a, a, a big screen somewhere at, at a live production, it wouldn't be acceptable if we used a Behringer Sharp to delay the audio. But for a show like this, if all I was using was this camera, I'm not sure why the color has gone so funky here. Um, if all we were using was this camera, and we could, uh, we, could, we could use a delay unit to sync up the audio and the video. Um, so that would not be quite the issue. Uh, Tommy House was also mentioning in the chat room about, you know, this camera. I think what he was talking about was in relation to, to actually, you know, smooth panning. Um, and I can imagine that I would use this camera to set up a, a, a fairly static shot and then switch to that shot and then switch to a different shot, change the camera to a different location, and then switch to that camera again. I wouldn't use this, uh, for example, to follow a, a play in a football game. Um, I don't think it, it's designed for that, and I don't think it would handle that particularly well. Um, but that's just me talking. Uh, let's see what other... I, I would have to agree with you. So far, I think uh, I think to follow shots, th that could be a challenge, uh, especially as, as you have more than one. Defining presets and kind of lining your shots up like on a stage, like a musical, and going, okay, I know this is where the action's going to be. I think it is superb for that. Or lectures, uh, those type of live events. Yeah, there's some discussion in the chat room about setting this up for musical shows. Um, and, and Carl actually has a lot of experience in doing video for some, some high-end uh, musical artists that you would probably recognize. So I think we might All refer right. to him. Uh, when he says, yeah, you want to be able to move your cameras around. But I, I can imagine also that you would, would want uh, uh, some fairly static shots uh, that you could always know that you could go to no matter what else was going on. Um, that At least that's the way it worked for us and when we did soccer. Is we, had, we had cameras that, that we knew were, would always be a good shot. It might not be a close-up shot, but uh, it would always be a good shot. And if, if all else fails, we could, we could drop back to one of those. Um, but good, good conversation in the chat room about it. It's good to have so much experience in there. And uh, right now, Vid Blaster is still pushing uh, 85 to 97 percent. So if you see some some lag or some drop frames, I suspect it's CPU related more than anything else. Um, probably shouldn't have pushed it this hard today, but. Uh, you know, we're here to break it and see what it takes to break it. And if we can break it, then we can figure out how we want to fix it. Did I lose Mike? I'm sorry, Mike. There, there, uh, there it yeah. is. Just reading some of this. I th I don't think this is this will replace the a live operator, but I think it can supplement it, and you can get shots that you, you can't get. Better. So in that sense. Um, it, it's definitely powerful, but you do need you do need that uh, somebody with it with an actual camera. So my next step 
speaking of that, is actually to take a, a, a Canon 5D or 7D or 60, put a battery in a bag, the output of that, uh, encode it. I've got a, a, a small encoder about, I don't know, less than, a, certainly less than a foot. Put that all in a backpack, throw an antenna on it, and do it wireless and run it in the blaster. So that way I, I've, got the, I've got the best of both worlds. And I'll, I'll let you know when I get there. Canon's uh, shipping me their 5D, so we'll see how it goes. It might be nice to uh, have that kind of relationship where you can just pick up a phone and say, oh, would you mind sending me a 5D for a couple <laughs> yeah. of weeks and uh, throw in some good glass? And uh, Yeah, yeah, oh, that's nice. That's nice. Well, let's see. If we don't have any other camera requests or camera questions... We're going to wrap up this segment. Mike, it's been a, a real treat to have you here. Thank you thank so you. much for coming on the show, and thank you so much for the, the loan of these cameras. Um, the other one that, that he was referring to is the uh, the M40. Um, I, I hooked both these up, and you know how it is when you've got one standard definition camera and one high definition camera. Nobody wants to look at the standard definition camera anymore. Um, <laughs> it's the high definition camera that had all the goodies and, and uh, was was so much more fun champ for this and i will be shipping these back to you um by christmas maybe something yeah. like that <laughs> yep no sooner than that that's great that's great okay well folks we're going to move along to the uh, the next segment of the show here and uh see if i can switch back um and mike i hope you'll hang around uh for, if you've got minutes to hang around oh, yeah. for the post show uh we're going to just mute, mute your audio while, while we move into that um, one of the things that uh, that I've been doing, and in fact, you know what, we got this real cool camera. Let's let's see if we can use it. I'm going to switch over to this cam and see what kind of shot we can get on this uh, this nano control here. And let me get the nano control up where we can all see it, and then see if we can zoom in a little bit. And you know what, I can move the camera, or I could just click on the control surface and say. Look at that. Okay. I'm having trouble here because I got cords on one end. And there we go. The, uh, yeah, that's not the best picture. Should have taken more time to get this set up. Sorry about that, folks. Um, you know, one of the cool things, though, about this little device, and let's see where we got it right here, is that uh, I have programmed this button this button, this button, and this button to do some things. And it took me about five minutes. And the first button will take me back to the Tom shot. The second button will take me to the guest and the host shot. This, the third button to the guest only. And then the fourth button turns off any video overlays that might have gotten left behind. So let me flip back to this one for just a second. Um, and let's set up the screen capture because I want to show you the software that we use to do it. Um, it's a really a, a, a neat little piece, and we're just going to drop it in on top of, oops, we're going to drop it in on top of everything else. Can y'all see that? Let me load that screen cap up a little bit more so you can see it a little better. Well, thought I was blowing it up. There we go. Uh, and what we've got there is something called um, Mono MIDI. And Mono MIDI allows us to record the keystroke or to record commands and then have them executed in order by pressing a key. So I don't know how well you can see at home. Let's see. Is that going to that gonna move a little bit? No, I guess it's not. Um, in the left-hand column, we've got numbers, and each one of those numbers represents key on the keyboard. And then we have an API command column where I basically, I'm just, just using very basic VidBlaster API commands, um, have put in commands to turn off video overlays and to, to uh, turn on different cameras. Uh, we'll go for just a minute. Um, it is a, a free download. You can get it from the VidBlaster wiki, and that's W-I-K-I dot VidBlaster dot com, uh, wiki dot VidBlaster dot com. 
and it's called Mono MIDI, and it works with a any MIDI control. Now I picked the uh, the Korg Nano control because, from what I could tell in talking to a lot of folks, that seemed to be a fairly common control surface that people were using for all sorts of things. I think um, it. Uh, is uh, 50 or 60 dollars depending on, uh, on on where you can get it I've seen them on eBay for about that I think there's also a white and blue version uh, that may be slightly different there was an older version of this same control that was laid out slightly differently um, but uh, I'm not using the programming um, on the control itself. I'm simply using the the application called Mono MIDI and using the the controls that are already built into the the keyboard. So I've got four controls that that I've got set up. One is this shot. The second is the the shot with with me and Mike, which is essentially me in a screen capture. The third shot is a shot of Mike by himself and the fourth shot or the fourth control, excuse me, turns off all the video overlays. Now, interesting thing about this is switching from camera to camera, um, essentially a switch turns off one and turns on the second. But to turn on a video overlay, if you were to turn on a second video overlay, they would simply stack on top of each other. Turning on one doesn't automatically turn off the other. So to make this work today, I had to put in a series of, of essentially commands to turn off different video overlays. So turn off video overlay one, two, three, and four, and then I would turn, put in the command to, uh, to switch to a particular camera, and then the next command would be to turn on a particular video overlay. So when I switch to this shot uh, that would be just mic, you notice his overlay is just a tad late in coming in. Same thing when it comes back to me, how his is just a tad late in going over. And that's partially because the vid blaster, I have to look at it a little more closely, but I think the overlay function does not have a transition setting. So you, you sort of have a medium dissolve there. If it had a, a, a cut, a transition that allowed you to choose a cut setting, I suspect it would be a little more snappy. Um, but that is the Korg Nano Control with the Vid Blaster um, API and a little helper program called Mono MIDI. I think the possibilities on this Mono MIDI are really, really uh, great because, and let me pull up the keyboard again so where we can see it a little bit, because we've got, uh, we've got sliders. And we've got knobs, and they can be uh, controlled um, through both through VidBlaster and through um, the software that comes with the the Nano Control. So we can program the sliders to execute a series of commands. We can program the knobs to execute a series of commands. And I'm hoping that means that we can, uh, we can um, transition or f fade in and out things like this overlay right here, um, and that we can use the knob or the slider to adjust uh, the, for example, if we're using video uh, replay three, which is just slow motion instant replay, uh, that we can program that to, uh, to pick a starting point, to pick a stopping point, uh, to save a clip um, to in when the playlist is established to be able to to play a clip and to to use the the slider or the knob to slow down the the video replay speed at that point so that it happens kind of live action one of uh, one of the criticisms with the video replay 3 the instant replay slow motion version is that it's a little cumbersome to use and of course it's cumbersome to use. If you look the way the professionals do it, they've got all sorts of control surfaces that have, uh, um, what is it, I think it's called a jog shuttle uh, wheel, and it will accelerate back to a certain point in time. Um, and they can uh, use sliders to it to adjust the control and, and make things go forwards as well as backwards. 
So hopefully with the right, uh, right control surface in VidBlaster, we can get some of that going. There is uh, a movement afoot called the, the VidBlaster API work group um, that if you're interested in, you can make that interest known on the VidBlaster forum. And that work group is putting together some ideas for the types of applications that could be made of the VidBlaster API. These would be uh, third-party apps. You might want to call them plugins. It all depends on how they would function. Um, some, I would guess, some of the simpler ones might be free. Uh, some of the others might be programs that the, the programmer would want to charge for. Uh, frankly, as a sports programmer, I would pay to be able to use this nano control or some other control surface with the instant replay. I think that would be a, a very effective use of that. Uh, the API does more than just control instant replay. Um, some of the, the members of, uh, actually some of the folks that are, are watching today have used the API to set up a tally light system. So when a camera is selected, uh, a tally light will go on on that camera to indicate that that is the active camera, the camera that's in use at the moment. Uh, VidBlaster has lots of opportunities using the API. I think that's the, the real exciting part for VidBlaster in the future as we, we've kind of hit all the common uses for VidBlaster, sports, talk shows, church services. But now let's go a little deeper and let's let the API do some of the heavy lifting if we can just figure out what we want it to do, we can tell it how we want it to do it. Um, that would be the API. If you're interested in, in just following the API work group, or if you'd like to know more about it, if you'll go to the VidBlaster forum, again, that's forum.vidblaster.com, and uh, I'd say probably just do a search for API work group. That might be the quickest way to pop into. I think there's just one or two posts about that. And, uh, and make a post there and express your interest. If you're a programmer and, and want to join with us or to, uh, to see about getting some funding for something like that, um, raise your voice and let, let it be heard because there may be some ways to kind of, as a community, uh, fund some of these things so that they can be put into use. I can imagine uh, all the folks that are out there using VidBlaster right now, again, I'll use sports as a good example because it's the one I know the best. Um, but if, uh, you know, 20 or 50 of the folks that are doing sports broadcasting were to pool their funds, uh, they could come up with an app that would allow them uh, the ability to use the instant replay in a very uh, easy to learn and easy to execute manner, and then have a product that could be marketed um, to, a, to a larger community to, to get your investment back or, or to, to help uh, give a little bit more benefit to the, the programmer that put that all together. Um, anyway, that's sorry to get off on a tangent there about the VidLaster API, but I think it's one of the most under-realized, uh, underutilized parts of VidBlaster is, is the API. If you'd like to know more about it, go to the VidBlaster wiki. Again, that's wiki.vidblaster.com. Uh, the commands to the, to the API are in there, or you can just go to the help section in VidBlaster and the commands to the API are in there. If you have a question about the API, I'm probably not the best one to write, but I'll give it a go. You can write to me, tom at that vidblaster.com, and I'd be happy to have a go at it. Uh, speaking of questions, if you have a question about VidBlaster, we'd love to address it here on the show. And if we use your question on the show, we'll give you a gift certificate for $10, a whole $10, but it is $10 off a future purchase of VidBlaster, whether it's an upgrade or if you want to buy a version that you don't already have. Uh, we would ha be happy to use your question on the show. Um, I got an interesting question this morning, and it was a very short question. It said, can VidBlaster be used for live streaming? Um, and I thought, well, yeah. It can. It's kind of like that's its main purpose. So question, dig a little deeper when it comes time to questions and, and see if you can come up with some really good ones that, uh, that'll give us a little bit. Uh, but we love questions here on that VidBlaster guy. Uh, just a reminder that I am a VidBlaster reseller. Uh, so full disclosure on that. 
This is a you know a one hour infomercial for VidBlaster, uh, but there are lots of ways to buy VidBlaster. You can go to the VidBlaster website, vidblaster.com, and purchase it there in the store from VidBlaster directly. Um, when you do that, you get the same VidBlaster that you would get from me, and you get access to the VidBlaster support forum. And that's pretty much the limit of the support that's offered. I mean, the forum's great. I've been a moderator on that forum for several years. And, and we do try hard to answer your questions. But sometimes there are things that just a phone call would just make things happen so much more quickly. And that's what I, as a reseller, can bring to the table. The ability to pick up the phone, call and say, Hey, Tom, you know, we've talked before about this problem that I'm having. You know, and this other problem has happened. How can we fix it? And that's what I can bring to the table as a reseller is the ability to, to, you know, you get my cell phone number, you get my email address, and you can reach me when you need me. Um, I have a lot of friends, friends, but clients that broadcast uh, high school sports, and high school sports typically happen in the evenings. And so when I get a call on that particular number in the evenings, I know "Eh, I need to answer that call because that's somebody that's up against a deadline or has got something they desperately want to do, but it's not working right for whatever reason. Um, And I'm not not just a vid blaster expert. I've I've been there, I've done that. I've done the church church streaming. I've done sports streaming. I'm doing uh, uh, internet TV talk show streaming. And so I've got the experience, not just with vid blaster, but with all the other piece parts that it takes to put together a broadcast. And I would be happy to help you uh, learn and get started on your own broadcast. Nothing is is more fulfilling to me than to tune in to a show that I <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry about that. Tune in to a show where I know the the uh, the producer, the director, and I've helped them put the show together, and that's that's just a lot of fun and, and very fulfilling. Very fulfilling. Uh, let me check the chat room here and see uh, that we haven't missed anything yet. Um, a lot of folks said that they have not uh, used the API yet. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that you just have to, uh, you have to dive into it and clear, clear the decks and, and get a little time and dive into it and ask a lot of questions. And I would be happy to share what little knowledge I have uh, on, on questions about the API. It's it's Tom at thatvidblaster.com. I think this brings us about to the end of our time together today. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, remember, we're live on Wednesdays at 3 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock in the, in the UK, and you can always pick up our videos after the fact on YouTube, thatvidblasterguide.com. Uh, until next week, I'm Tom Sinclair. Shoot me an email if I can help you in any way. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you next week.